So yes, let's get it out of the way. I like Zack Snyder's brand new movie, Rebel Moon, which is being hailed as one of the worst films of this year, if you've seen that Rotten Tomatoes score. And honestly, I get it. I honestly do. Not gonna lie, because just getting this right out of the way... Netflix, you absolutely should have released the R-rated three-hour director's cut. That should have been the version that we all saw for the first time. If you're trying to do this, oh, but here's the Snyder cut of Rebel Moon. That's not smart. It's not clever for part two. Absolutely do not do that. Release the version Zack Snyder made because we've been through this so many freaking times before. If you've ever seen a Zack Snyder movie and you've seen the theatrical released movie, and then you go and see the Snyder cut or the director's cut version of those movies you're like yeah that version is 10 times better we've been through this with Watchmen. we've been through this with batman v superman we've been through this with especially justice league and the list goes on and on it's just gone through his entire career and here we are with rebel moon another film that there is a completely different version of the film that is longer r-rated and yeah, you can tell that this film is lacking a lot. The way that I equivalate this movie is that it feels like a skeleton that is barely functioning and it has all the pieces to function and entertain you and in a way intrigue you, but it doesn't feel complete. It feels completely rushed and torn and scattered together. And this broken skeleton is barely moving. So, again, I got a lot of thoughts on Rebel Moon. In the end, I did like it. And that's coming from someone who just likes Zack Snyder movies. I am a Zack Snyder fan. I'm not a diehard, but I do like his movies. I'm always excited for this. In fact, Rebel Moon Part 1 was one of my most anticipated films for this entire year. So... Take that as what you will. I'm definitely excited to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So leave your thoughts down there. Hit that like and subscribe button for more movie content like this. Also, speaking of Zack Snyder, I will be having a final DCEU ranking this week once Aquaman 2 releases and a thousand, uh, not a thousand, but a ton of different top 10 lists coming out next week after Christmas. So do look forward to that. But if you are new here, or maybe you've never heard of Rebel Moon and you're clicking on this video for the first time, Rebel Moon is about a peaceful settlement on the edge of a distant moon that finds itself threatened by the armies of a ruling force. A mysterious stranger living among its villagers becomes their best hope for survival. This is again directed by Zack Snyder and stars the likes of Sophia Botello, Charlie Hunt, I'm Jenna Malone, Anthony Hopkins. I mean, the list goes on and on from there. And with every movie review, I like starting with the pros. So let's start with why I like this movie. First off, I'm a big sci-fi fan. I'm always down for a brand new sci-fi world, specifically one that was crafted and created from Zack Snyder. And we'll get the elephant out of the room. Yes, this was originally written as a Star Wars movie. You can definitely tell that this feels like a heavy metal version of Star Wars that Zack Snyder crafted through his own vision. It's dark, it's gritty, it's nasty. It definitely, again, feels like it should be rated R and this version was not but I really dug this entire world building the entire aesthetic the vibe I was completely feeling that um in fact sometimes it would make me remember some of the old album covers you would see of old heavy metal bands and Honestly, like, and this might be a diss to some people, but it kind of gave me vibes of the best aspects of Sucker Punch. And I really was feeling that. I've always said that Zack Snyder, in any of his originally and wholly creative visions, he is such a visionary, completely towards his vision of what he was trying to craft, not just within the story, but specifically in the world that he builds here. The mythology again, the aliens, the creatures. I mean, Jenna Malone's creature in here that she is, it's really unique, and I dug it. And I continue to be intrigued throughout the entire film every time they planet hop to another planet because of course like i mentioned this is very seven samurai isk you've seen the same story told in the magnificent seven you've seen the same story even told in the likes of bugs life and it's about one person recruiting a bunch of people to save the little people and they instead of going from town to town it's very much planet to planet finding the best warriors they can and for me 
I liked traveling to each of these planets. I actually wish we had a little bit more time on all of them. I wish we had more time with the characters, and you're going to hear me talk about that later on, but I like the story. It's very bare bones for what it was, but I enjoyed it. It's something you've seen before, and if you enjoy those films, you'll probably like what they're doing here. also goes down to the action. For a PG-13 action movie, the action is pretty damn decent in here. But again, we're going to talk about that in my issue. But if I am to go back towards the characters in here, and while I feel there is a very lack of of character development, Sophia Botello kills it in here. She is great. She was such a standout when I first saw her in Kingsman, and ever since then, I've been really championing her into the Hollywood stream, and I think she's great in here. Ed Skirin is great as well. I thought he was a really fun villain. Charlie Hunnam, I wish there was more of him, but I also thought he was great. Oh, Huseman, I like him as well. I just, again, not too many characters I can really be like, yeah, he's memorable, yeah, he's not... But the ones that I mentioned, I liked for the most part. Visual effects as well are arguably better than 95% of the blockbusters that we saw this year. I did was not worried about that at all because Zack Snyder are always crafts incredibly visually looking movies. Yes, there is slow-mo and each of the slow-mo moments are great. I also, like speaking of that, I really loved his choices of it. It's not overly used in this movie. And I have to give credit to where credit is due on that. Do you go back to what sucked me into this was the world, was the atmosphere, was the vibe, was the aesthetic. I do like how dark and dire this world felt. And it really felt like when I say heavy metal, it really felt like that in this entire world. The reasons I liked it, I kind of liked it as just kind of a nice escapey film for myself. But man, there is a lot wrong with this movie. And every single thing I can just imagine the director's cut being better. In. Now, I could be wrong. I could watch the director's cut and be like, nope, all my issues stay the same because I'm just grading this version and I am going to actually probably review the director's cut just to see is there a difference that I feel different about it, compare the two and see is it a gigantic difference. And uh, I'm just kind of going by my heart and how I usually feel on Zack Snyder director's cuts because they're usually better. I just really felt this movie was lacking a lot. And put it as what you will, say the story is still a little bit messy and clunky and surface level because nearly every character in here, you might be like, that character looks badass. Oh, they got an actor. He's pretty damn cool in here. Oh, it's surface level. A character like Nemesis, who's played by Baduna, who I might be mispronouncing that. She's badass. She's incredible. She's like a Jedi in here. No, no, barely used, barely any development besides one small scene. Uh, Jamon Hansu, who I absolutely love in every single thing he's in. He plays a character named General Titus. He comes into the most badass look. He, you see him in this most badass 300 vibe area. Zero character development. Zero. You see this Colosseum area. They're talking and hyping that they need to get the General Titus. You're there on the planet for five minutes. Made no sense to me. Like, I don't know what they were doing. Then you also have Anthony Hopkins playing this badass robot that's featured in so much of the marketing, and he's not even in the movie. Like, he's in the movie for maybe 10 minutes. I mean, that that's can be really much put forward that 90% of the cast members in here, besides Sophia Patello and Ed Skirin and Michelle Huseman, uh, everyone else is in this movie for at least, at most, 10 minutes. Dialogue-wise, less than 10 minutes. That includes Charlie Hunnam, who I liked in this movie. I think for me, that is where my biggest issue lies with this film. While I said I like this movie, this is not one that I can wholeheartedly recommend. It's one that I can recommend if you're a Zack Snyder fan, but if you're not a Zack Snyder fan, I think you're just going to watch this and think it's a mess. And I'm watching this going... All these characters have no character development. There's no development to any of them. I'm not saying that I needed deep diving stuff, but I don't know anything about them. And I understand this is only a part one, and, I, and I will, I'll give credit on that. I, I think the part one on here actually felt completely fine. Like where it ended, I felt satisfied. I wasn't left going, oh my God, it just ended like on a giant cliffhanger. No, it kind of reminded me of the same feeling I had watching like Fellowship of the Ring for the very first time in the way that it ended. So, again, you know more is coming. It's already been filmed. We're getting part two next year. That's, that's not a complaint to me. My complaint is the characters and how surface level they are. And I think that's going to bother a lot of people watching this movie. 
didn't completely bother me, but it was something tinkering in the back of my head. Like, I would have liked to know more about the rest of the crew. And I would have liked to see chemistry between all of them interacting. Genuinely, we didn't get that. The film feels rushed and moved and having to not take its time. Which if you remember any other Zack Snyder original cuts, that's the same complaint I had in those. Last but not least, my biggest issue with this is fine. If you want him to cut down on that, that's cool, do whatever. Why is this movie not rated R is beyond me. This this is like watching a John Wick movie, not, not in terms of, again, John Wick having some of the best action ever, but in terms of watching an R-rated uh, John Wick film and every time he goes and puts a gun to someone's head and pulls the trigger, it cuts away. And, or stabs someone multiple times, pulls away. Every time it seems like they're setting up an amazing action shot or set piece, you can be entertained by it because it's blasters, it's destruction, it's all that. But the moments are missed. The impact is missed. That emphasis on what Zack Snyder is known to do in his incredible action scenes that he's filmed throughout his entire career, the Batman warehouse scene, a lot of the sequences in Zack Snyder's Justice League, to even, of course, all of 300 are lost because they cut away. You can clearly tell this film was made to be rated R from the start. And I would understand if they went with a PG-13 version because this was going to get a wider theatrical release, but it's not. This is not your child's Star Wars. This is for adults. And yeah, very disappointed in that. I think that's where the more and more I think about the movie, I still go back and be like, I like that, but I'll never rewatch this version. I'll never rewatch this version of the film and I will have zero interest to watch it. And I'm more interested to watch the second part of this. And I'll tell you right now, if part two releases in the same dumb fashion, a PG 13 version that's shorter than what Zack Snyder intended, I will not be watching that first version. I will watch the director's cut when it premieres so I get the full experience. And honestly here, I'm happy I saw this, so at least when I see the director's cut, I can see, hopefully, the better vision. I mean, again, I might be re-reviewing this movie in less than a year and being like, yeah, the director's cut still doesn't cut it, but, I mean, th that is that. Th these, these are more just complaints of what I hope, I guess, to see in his director's cut and what I hope to see, and specifically, like, reading interviews, it seems like that's what we're gonna get, is those better action sequences that aren't as cut up, the better character development, hopefully chemistry between them, actually banter, collaboration, things like that. Those are the moments I need to see, and I think if you're adding an entire hour back into the movie, I can greatly see where you can be placing a lot of those. Now, with that said, I do have one issue with the movie. This is one issue that I do not think a director's cut will fix. It's the writing. I think some of the writing is pretty lackluster and honestly feels a little bit first draft in terms of dialogue. Um, sometimes it, it's pretty smart and I, intelligent and I liked it, but other times it just felt very one note and I would have liked a little bit more from that. But that is my only actual issue that's again not something i think the director's cut will fix that's just something i think that's wrong with the movie so with that said rebel moon is a messy heavy metal sci-fi fantasy version of star wars meets seven samurai did i like it yes do i usually like snyder films yes will you like it that honestly depends on your taste. Depends if you like Zack Snyder. Depends if you're a diehard fan of his. Depends if you don't like his films. This won't make you a lover. This is kind of like the best hits of Zack Snyder, but in a sci-fi realm. The film feels like a skeleton that has all the right pieces to function, but just lacks so much. And I left the movie needing more. I love this world. I love the aesthetic. I love the vibe. I love Sofia Botello's character, and I love what they were setting up. It really does feel like something that would have been from some of the best moments of Sucker Punch, all those imaginative, creative worlds, but actually fleshed out in an entire film. The biggest issues with this movie are two major things that I think a director's cut will fix, and I'm not going to, I'm going to give them issues to this, but I think a director's cut will again infuse it, is hands down the R-rated action, we need more blood, do not cut up that action, and second, more time with the characters. Give us more of that. Don't make them as one note. 
And in the end, the only thing I really had an issue with was some of the dialogue. But I enjoyed it. I was entertained. I will never watch this cut again. And I think if you're one of those people who likes Zack Snyder, you should support this opening day on Netflix this week. But if you're someone who likes Zack Snyder and is more interested in just seeing this movie because it looks cool to you, I'd probably just wait till the director's cut personally. So with this movie, I'm going to give it two grades. Uh, this is weird because I barely ever rarely do this, but I'm going to give it a Z for Zack Snyder fans. But I'm also going to give it a grade of a C+. I'm really looking forward to that director's cut. I'm hoping it's better than this one. I think it will be. My gut's telling me it will. It always ends up being. But from what I saw, I liked. I just definitely wanted more from it. So with all that said, guys, make sure to hit, hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Leave your thoughts down below. Are you excited for Rebel Moon? Are you not? What's your favorite Zack Snyder movie? If I do get time, I will try to do a Zack Snyder ranking, but I think I'm going to wait until the director's cut and, of course, part two also comes out and then re-rank them all next year. If you want to see my ranking right now, go check out my letterbox down there as well. But, of course, until next time, stay classy.